Well, welcome back to uh, Bronco Nation News Live here, bronconationnews.com. BJ Rains with you, and we get a chance for uh, a couple minutes here. We're talking about the uh, game day experience, the, the fan experience here at Albertson Stadium, and our man Josh Bender is with us, the uh, Interim Associate Athletic Director for Strategic Marketing and Fan Experience at Boise State. Uh, how's it going, Josh? Not too bad. Yourself? I'm doing great, man. Appreciate you coming on and spending a couple minutes uh, chatting with us. I know folks are obviously really excited uh, about uh, kickoff uh, coming up on Saturday. Uh, you know, we've seen some of the releases come out and things, and maybe we'll get into some specifics. But uh, just generally, how exciting is it for uh, you and the uh, marketing team and the athletic department to uh, finally have a game on Saturday after kind of months of planning and stuff? Oh, man, it's going to be so exciting. I mean, game day is the best part of our jobs. And so now that we're finally here, it really feels great. So. Can't wait to get there. I can't wait to show everything that we've been working on over the summer and over these last couple months with Bronco Nation. So it's going to be a really exciting time to be a Bronco. What are you most excited about? What what, what change or what uh, thing is uh, do you think is most exciting to you or is going to be most exciting to the fans? Yeah, I think just all of the stuff that our Experience Blue Committee has brought forward to us. Uh, they did a phenomenal job meeting over the summer with us. We brought lots of ideas to them. They brought ideas to us. So Every day I really recommend, but a few things I just want to really point out in specific that I think can be huge hidden home runs for us is the Blue Chaos Flag Raiser. So each game bringing back a former player, local celebrity, it'll be kind of a different special person each game. So seeing them come back, having them raise the Blue Chaos Flag as we're getting Bronco Nation up and rowdy right before kickoff, it's going to be a great time. We, we've, we've seen a lot, too, about the uh, changes to the food vendors and uh, the, you know, going to have some more drink options and stuff. Uh, I know signage included in that as well. What um, what can folks expect uh, in terms of the food and beverage options? Yeah, it's going to be all brand new this year. Um, Chartwells has done an amazing job working with us, partnering with us. The Locals Corner that they're bringing out, which is going to be in the northwest part of the concourse, is going to be a huge place that is going to have lots of grab-and-go options, Local breweries are going to be featured and just kind of a rotating list each game. So it'll always kind of stay fresh and new. So really looking forward to that. I know uh, also as part of the, the deal with the new scoreboard, one of the sm- things in the smaller print was that they were upgrading the TVs around the concession stands or the concourses or maybe just adding them in general. Um, what, what is that going to be up and running by Saturday? Are folks going to be able to watch the game while they're standing in line for a hot dog or? Yep. So that was another one of the things that our experience blue committee brought forward is making sure that you don't miss any part of the game while you're standing in lines for concessions. So having those new TVs up there, having them up and running, that's going to be a huge priority and it'll be ready to go for game one. And my understanding too now is folks can order food right from their phone, right? Uh, on an app. Uh, tell us about yep. that. Yep. So right when you download the Bronco sports app, there's a card in there that says concessions go right in there and you can order right from your phone and then you'll get a notification when your food's ready to just go pick up. So create nice and easy. Don't have to wait around lines. I mean, I know last year and every year, but I know last year that was one of the issues is people were commenting on long lines in the concession stand. You guys are pretty confident, whether it be with adding some extra, you know, beer areas or the grab and go options or this phone app. I mean, are you, I know you won't know till Saturday, but are are you hopeful it's not going to be quite as bad in terms of the, the lines and things? Yeah, obviously we won't know until Saturday, but we're definitely hopeful. I mean, the new point of sale system, too, that just got implemented, that'll speed things up tremendously, too. And Chartwells came up with some really good ideas to help speed up the process. So we're hopeful that'll be a lot better experience this year. Tell us about that uh, North End Zone scoreboard. We see an up and running. uh, What, you know, is it just a little, I know obviously it's a little bit bigger, but I'm sure, I assume it's a little brighter, a little crisper. Uh, What, what, can can you guys do anything differently with that scoreboard now in the North End Zone? Yeah, so I'm sure you guys have kind of seen a little couple pictures here and there have made their way onto Twitter throughout the week of us testing it. So we're really excited to see it. But the scoreboard is a much higher definition um, than our last one. So it's going to be a very, very clear picture that hopefully everyone throughout the stadium can see. And also just with how much bigger it got, we were able to kind of rearrange the scoreboard a little bit. So you will now see game in progress up on the top left side. We'll have a whole bunch of stats up on the right side of it. And then a brand new kind of feature that we're doing this year is out of town scores. So you'll be able to keep up to date on other games that are happening throughout the entire country. Uh, We'll have a scrolling ticker on the bottom that will have all the games and all the current scores. So we're really excited for it. I think it'll make a huge difference to fans and just helping to keep you informed and engaged. And pretty crazy. You see how big it is and you think, oh, that's going to be the small board here pretty soon. Uh, I, you know, I know it's still a couple weeks away. We saw they finally got the staging area though out in the parking lot, right? For all the uh, Mm -hmm. equipment stuff. So is the actual construction on that going to get going here pretty soon on the South end zone board? 
yeah, so it's been going for all through the summer, just uh, the stuff you can't see. Well, so I mean, like, the, yeah, the full, we, we want to see the actual everything. board. Go I know up you want to see the actual board. Go up. Uh, I'm not, I'm not one working on that one. I'm not making any promises. That's Bob Carney's area. And he's been doing an amazing job keeping us on track. So we're still hopeful that we'll be seeing progress here shortly, but little by little, you're going to be seeing new things almost every single week start going up. Well, so what, how is that board going to differ when that board's up and going, you know, hopefully, you know, San Diego State or BYU or at some mm-hmm. game down the season. What what are you gonna guys? What are you gonna put on that board, and how will that work with the other board? Now that you're gonna have two brand new huge boards uh, in the stadium. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing just with how big they are. Um, the biggest one, and this is going back to our experience, Blue Fan Committee. They want to see stats. That was their biggest ask for us: is we want to see as much stats as we possibly can. So finding different ways um, with the South Board specifically, since it is so much bigger, to incorporate more stats, whether that be um stats total yards rushing yards passing yards all that good stuff but also first downs what do we got for penalty yards what's time of possession looking like are there any milestones that are getting close to being reached stuff like that so hammering home as much stats as we possibly can on that board and then also just continuing to keep our consistency whether it's north board south board we'll have the out of town scores we'll have a much bigger um actual video display than we've had in the past so it's going to be awesome now, I know uh, you guys are working on something, too, that uh, you're just going to, I guess, show on Saturday from the uh, third quarter to the fourth quarter uh, transition. I know Thunderstruck, uh, mm-hmm. it was pretty cool last year, but it sounds like you guys are maybe, maybe upping that again, uh, something new or, or at least uh, improved for, for this year. I, I know you probably can't say too much about that, but anything else inside the stadium? I want to go to the tailgating area next, but anything else yeah. inside the stadium that uh, we haven't touched on yet that fans should uh, pay attention to or be ready for? Yeah, uh, we'll keep we'll keep the third to fourth quarter transition a little bit under wraps. You'll have to come to the game to see that one. It's going to be really exciting this year, though. So we're we're really looking forward to that. Um, another one though is we partnered with a company called Q Audio, who does a whole bunch of light shows. Um, that's going to be an amazing one. We're going to use that throughout the game, whether it be like we did last year with Light 'Em Up. We'll bring that back, but use the light show this year. Um, intro video will have its own custom light show going to it. And then we'll have a little piece of that for the third and fourth quarter transition. So it's going to be really exciting. I was going to say during the uh, two o'clock game, though, we may not see much of the light show. You're not going to see much of it. We're still going (laughs) to do it because we want to make sure that fans understand how it works. And so that way, when we do get to a night game, it's all seamless. So it'll still happen. Just won't necessarily look exactly amazing and beautiful like it will at night. But it's going to be incredible once we get to use it at night. So uh, the, the flag raising, how did that come about? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, w- which corner of the stadium, where's the flag? How big is it? Uh, how's that all going to go down? Yep. Uh, so how that came about was just talking with our fan experience committee. Um, they wanted to kind of help us come up with something that can get the fans really engaged, really loud right before kickoff. And just kind of really the whole point of it is setting the tone for the entire game. If we crush and it's loud and rowdy right at kickoff, that's just going to carry on throughout the game. So Looking around, we were kind of like, okay, well, one we really love and that our fan base or the fan experience committee really connected with was the Seahawks and raising the 12th man flag. And so taking kind of our mantra, which is we want to create blue chaos. We want to create that home field advantage for our team. Taking that and really just raising that flag up to signal it's time, Bronx Nation, this is your moment to really stand up, get loud throughout the entire game. We need to make sure that we have our boys back and that we're creating the best home field we possibly can. I was just thankful there when you said Bronco Nation, you didn't follow that with Let's Ride. Uh, you had the opportunity there. I'm very thankful that was <laughs> no, not uh, I'm, what you I'm said. I'm leaving what, that one to others. Thank, thank you. Thank you. What's, uh, so so uh, any hints at the uh, first flag raiser? Uh, you'll actually hear about it. It'll be announced here shortly. So Okay, so is, it, is the plan to – and not necessarily make it a surprise. Usually every week it'll be announced like a day before or a couple of days before yep. or something. Okay. That's pretty cool. What's uh, yep. what about, what about uh, anything new with the music or the speakers or the sound system or anything like that? Yep. So the sound system is, is the same that it was last year. Um, they were housed in the North video board. It's now just right below it for now until we can transition that to the South. Um, so that's all staying the same, but music, we always make sure we're updating our music. Um, Want to make sure that it's staying as fresh and as good as we possibly can have. And we opened up to our fan experience committee. We allowed them to kind of make suggestions. Um, so they put in some songs that they wanted to hear. We're mixing that in with stuff that our team thinks is going to be a hit with the crowd and really make sure that everyone is feeling engaged and is liking what we're playing. Well, I know in the stadium there's a lot of work, but there was a lot of work and focus put on outside the stadium as well. 
Uh, and we're visiting with Josh Bender here uh, from Boise State, the interim associate athletic director for strategic marketing and fan experience uh, here at Bronco Nation News. And I know uh, two areas, the, the plaza by the Hall of Fame there, and then also the tailgating area. Let's start, I guess, uh, closer to the stadium with the uh, – mm-hmm. the, there's going to be some live music, am I correct? Uh, what all is going to yep. be going on right there on the plaza by the uh, Lyle Smith statue? Yeah, this is going to be a great one. Um, Our whole point of this was we wanted to create a tailgating space for someone who doesn't have a tailgating space. So if you don't know where to go for game day for tailgating, right here's your place. So you'll have whatever you're looking for, whether that be live music, there'll be a concert every single game. Um, That's right where our Bronco walk is going to end. So you can greet the team right as they come through. Um, We're also going to have vendors set up so you can talk to any of our vendors that we got, get some swag, get stuff like that. If you have any t- questions of ticketing, there's going to be a ticketing booth kind of set up out there that's going to be running point for any questions that you might have. And then also we're going to have a sports garden area. So concessions, uh, alcohol sales, all in a fenced in area that you can get whatever you need. There's also our pregame radio show happening right out there. So you can listen to that and get all caught up for what's going to be happening in game and then food trucks. So there's going to be a rotating list of at least two or three food trucks each and every game, we're really looking forward to that. As another big one that our fans were asking for was more options when it comes to concessions, especially pregame. So those food trucks are going to be a huge hit. And then how does that spill over under Chevro Field? What's going on there? Yep. So the Chevro Field is, again, open to the public. Um, we will have part of it that is our private tailgate side, but the other part is open to the public. And what we're going for in there is kind of more a little bit more of a family-friendly atmosphere. So we'll have some inflatables that the kids can come and play in. Our kids club tent will be set up out there. So you can come, uh, we'll have face painting, um, some different activities specifically designed for kids and then a larger sports garden area. So again, with concession stand and alcohol sales all set up in there. So. Well, you still have the, uh, the, I know folks always, you mentioned having the scores on the scoreboard, but I know folks like to, to watch other games. You guys used to have that big truck with the big game on. I don't know if that's going to be there or if some other TVs are going to be there, but will there be any, any, any spot before the game where you can uh, watch some other games? Yeah, we, we've had a little, we've done a couple snags here and there um, with that TV truck specifically. We're working on it. So that one's still a little bit of work in progress and we'll, we'll definitely be working on it throughout the year and see what we can do for fans. Dude, does that all so that stuff starts what about three hours prior to kickoff or what's the timing on all that? Yep, so it starts up four hours prior oh, this four year. Four hours, okay. And the live music is three though. Yep. Okay, and then does that stuff? I know maybe, maybe not this game if you don't have the TV, but is any of that stuff or does Shiver Field open during the game as well? If folks don't have tickets or? Um, no, it'll be closing down right as kickoff gets going. Okay, so if you don't have a ticket, you're you're SOL. You got to go home, I guess, and watch the game. But uh, any anything, I mean, I I know it's been you know what 300 days, or it's been a long time. Oh, yeah. You guys have put in the marketing for this. I think it was 280 days just to have a game in general. But uh, you're looking at it from the last home game. You know, a really really long time here. Uh, what uh, you know what what is just the the feeling like? Like I said, I think it's over 300 days. All these blue experience or experience blue committee meetings and other meetings and everything i'm sure some long hours but uh how excited are you just to see it all come to fruition on saturday no man i can't wait i cannot wait it's gonna be so amazing i mean i love our fan base our fans are well probably the most passionate that i've seen and they really do care about our team they care about the fan experience and they care about each other so getting to work with some of them getting to put on just an amazing show for them it's just super exciting so i cannot wait to get to saturday and actually get to experience it with everyone now, I do want to ask you about the tickets uh, because uh, my understanding is there's a little bit of a confusion over the, the tickets, whether they're, uh, you can have a paper ticket or whether it's digital only. Uh, what is the status of the tickets? If they have a paper ticket for some reason, are they allowed to get into the stadium with that? Yes. If you have a paper ticket, you can get into the stadium. Um, back during the renewal process, we asked fans if they would like to have paper tickets or digital tickets. Depending on their answer, that was if you got paper tickets or if you didn't opt into that that is when you got your digital ticket. So whatever tickets you have, whether it be digital or whether it be paper, you will be able to get into the stadium with that. And if you have any questions, our ticket office is amazing. So please, please, please reach out to them. They'll get you taken care of and they'll make sure you get handled. Any other uh, final message for fans that are uh, making their way down there Saturday in terms of do's or don'ts or things they need to know or or uh, anything in particular you, you kind of want to leave, leave fans with? Yeah, bring a friend and get ready to bring chaos. <laughs> simple enough simple enough josh yep. pre- appreciate your time as always man we'll see you down there on saturday best of luck with uh everything running smoothly and and uh, looking forward to seeing it all in action man we appreciate your time yeah thank you for having me 
There he is, Josh Bender, the uh, Interim Associate Athletic Director of Strategic Marketing and Fan Experience at Boise State. So uh, if you're going to the game Saturday, hopefully that was some good info that uh, helped you guys as you're uh, getting ready to head down there on Saturday. So uh, 2 o'clock kickoff, so all this stuff will get going around 10 a.m. So uh, appreciate you checking us out, Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com. We'll see you Saturday, Boise State and UT Martin.